Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you all about the latest album from Lacrimas Profundere, Believing the Stars, out July 26th on Oblivion. The album has 10 tracks, 39 minutes in length, and this is the band's 12 full length album. This album is the death, the ending, and the rebirth of the band. I really feel that way. Perhaps the reason behind it is the lineup changes that they went through going into this record. None more important, in my opinion, than Julian Lare on vocals. Absolutely phenomenal. One of the main components of the record. I really feel like his addition allows the band to have a much diverse sound and approach. Just incredible. There were certain points on the record that I was wondering if this album had five or six different vocalists. That is how dynamic, how wide his range really is. And it just added so much to the tracks. The tracks are filled with melancholy and his delivery just adds to it. It, it, it just adds pain and suffering to a lot of the songs, but it adds life at the same time. It adds energy at the same time. So I really like his overall delivery, his overall sound, and how they came across on the tracks. The other thing surrounding the vocals that I really enjoyed was certain certain songs on the record, they added layers to the vocals in the choruses. This was really important for those songs because you really needed something to make the song a little bit more robust, a little bit thicker, not necessarily heavier, but to give the song a little bit of a push. So adding layers to the vocals in the chorus really does that. It really creates a lot more volume to the song. It makes the song feel a lot more powerful, more direct. So I really like everything that these guys did on this record surrounding the vocals. To me, the second main component of this record, besides the vocals, is the sound. And they were able to merge their old sound with their new sound. So this record really has a merger of melodic doom with gothic metal, gothic rock. It's really those two worlds coming together. Certain songs, the pendulum falls more towards one, certain songs, the pendulum falls more towards the other, and some, things, some songs, it's a perfect blend of both. This allows the album to have a lot of life, to have a lot of energy, to really not feel mundane and repetitive track after track. Because with the exception of a couple of tracks on the album, each single song really has its own DNA, its own structure, its own feel, its own fingerprint, if you will. It almost feels like a record that's made up of 10 individual singles, not a, a record necessarily that's put together as one full record, but almost a compilation. It has a lot of those same characteristics that you get from compilations. The, the thread, the chain that holds everything together is the content of the lyrics, the delivery of the vocals in the songs, and then the overall atmosphere that each song has. They have similar atmospheres from song to song, that mixed in with the lyrics, mixed in with the delivery, really allows the album to be concise, to be put together, to feel as a unit and not as separate individual tracks. Overall, I really feel like this is one of those albums that is very diverse and in its diversity lies its strength. This is my opinion about this record. I really enjoyed it. I really like the journey that it took me on and there was very hard for me to listen to this record and really find something that didn't make sense or didn't fit where it was. The whole record is really well put together, really well crafted, really well, well worked on. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I picked three songs that offer something different. I picked the song that, that feels a little bit more doom, I picked the song that has a blend of doom and gothic metal, and then I, have, I picked one that has more of a gothic metal feel vibe to it. I'm going to start with the Doom one. That's the opener on the record. I knew and will forever know. This is the opening track. I really like this track. Like I said, it has more of a Doom vibe all the way through. It just feels that way to me. It has a very dark riff, a very dark, somber, very somber guitar riff to it. The chorus brings some melancholy to the track. I mean, the melancholy is there. The chorus kind of adds on it and just brings it to the table. It becomes more noticeable and more in the forefront. When you mix in with the vocals and how the vocals are delivered, then you really have a song that has a really a, a really dark embrace to it, very melancholic, somber embrace to it. The, the chorus really punches through a bit more than the verses, and a lot of it has to do with the mixing of the vocal tracks in the chorus, like I mentioned before. They do that on this song, and I really feel that's what sets this song apart when it comes to the chorus and the verses, because the two are very similar in structure, very similar in sound. The, 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 the instruments pick up a little bit of intensity in the chorus, but not that much different from what you get in the verses. What really sets everything apart is how the vocals come at you. So I really feel that that in this specific track was very important because it really gave this doom and gloom feel to the overall track that was already present there from the guitars, but the way the vocals come at you just really added to it. 
The next track is Mother of Doom. This one to me is a perfect blend of both. It's a perfect blend of Doom and Gothic Metal. It really has those two elements put together in one. It's a song that, in my opinion, it's all about the vocals. This song is really just about how the vocals come at you, uh, the vocal approach of the track, how it sounds, the way the vocals are added, the layers that are added in the chorus really lights the mood of the song. This is a song that has a very dark mood, very dark overall atmosphere to it, but the way the vocals come across with those layers in the chorus really brings some light to the song. It makes you feel the song a little bit lighter, not as heavy. This, this is a song that really hides its beauty and its pain. That's how you can put this song together, is really feel that way. This is a song that, while beautiful, it, it, it has pain in there, and, and when you feel pain, you can find the beauty in that pain. It's just a perfect blend of these two worlds coming together, and once again, it's a song to me that really revolves around the vocals and how they come at you in different parts of the song. This is a vocal highlight, as far as I'm concerned. Last but not least, The Reaper. To me, this is a more gothic-driven song, not as doom and gloom, doesn't have that much of that, doesn't have that same melancholic feel that you get from Mother of Doom, has a, a more brighter approach, even though it's still a dark song, still very ominous, still has a little bit of an ominous vibe to it, but not as much as, for example, Mother of Doom. This is a song that not only the music changes from verses to chorus, but it, also, the intensity of the vocals really changes between the two, so it really allows for you to feel like there's this balance between between those two parts of the song. It's really a song that gravitates towards the changes that happen from verses to chorus. I really like that. Once again, it's a, it's a track that uses layers in the vocals, uh, in the chorus specifically. That, to me, adds a lot of volume to this song. This is a song that it's a lot lighter than the two previous ones that I mentioned, so it really needed something to bring the mood down, to bring the heaviness of the song down without making the song heavy. So by adding vocal layers in the chorus, they really did that. They really allowed the song to feel a lot bit thicker, specifically in that portion. Also create a little bit of, of extra weight to it and brought it back down to earth because this is a song that tends to levitate. Um, there's a middle guitar melody towards the middle, the middle of the song that's really beautiful. It has a really dark embrace to it. It has almost uh, just it's melancholy in a musical format, if you will. I really like it. And then from that, you think you're going to get a guitar solo, you're going to get the, you're going to get something, and you get this really beautiful guitar melody at that at that specific part of the track. And then it builds in towards the chorus, and then you get the chorus all the way through it throughout the end of the track. I really like that. I like the fact that instead of an over the top solo or something else they could have included in that part in order to bridge the song, they decided to go with this really dark, embracing guitar melody that just then leads you back. It, it, it comes off the chorus and then leads you back into the next chorus. I really like how they bridge that, that, that little bridge there just added a little bit of melody, uh, a, a dark melody to the track, a track that, I, like I said, I feel has a, a, very, a lot of lightness to it. So this melody adds a little bit of darkness, the, the layers of the chorus add a little bit of heaviness, and this is how they were able to balance this track out from beginning to end. All right, guys, this is it. This is Lagrimas Profunde with their brand new album, Bleeding the Stars, out July 26th in Oblivion. I absolutely love this record. I love the sound. And to me, like I said, if I had to pick one, one, one component of this record to take home is the vocals. Absolutely incredible on this record. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on the band, on the record, on the singles. Use the comment section below. As always, I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.